The Philadelphia 76ers are once again legitimate title contenders after the James Harden trade, and while there are a few legitimate reasons to doubt this team's ability to win a title, whether it be chemistry, or James Harden's health, or fit, whatever it is, there is one take that I continue seeing that is complete and utter nonsense. And that is the idea that Joel Embiid is some kind of playoff underperformer slash choker. I keep seeing the take that Joel Embiid cannot be trusted in the postseason. He can't do it in the playoffs. He underperforms every year, blah, blah, blah. Basically, people blaming Joel Embiid for the fact that the Sixers have not made it past the second round. And I think that that is absolute freaking bullcrap. Let me tell you why. Let me walk you all, in case you're one of these people, okay, one of these people who has not watched a Sixers playoff series since 2019, let me walk you through Joel Embiid's playoff performances and explain to you why this take is absolutely ridiculous. Let's start with the 2018 second round against the Boston Celtics, a series which the Sixers lost 4-1 and Joel Embiid was supposedly clamped by Al Horford. In this series, Joel Embiid put up 23 points, 14 rebounds, and 4 assists, along with a steal and a block. And if you look at his regular season averages, you will see that he averaged, oh my gosh, the exact same amount of points, 3 more rebounds, and 1 more assist than he did in the regular season. Pretty good stats, am I right? Now, the issue with this comes down to his efficiency, and B dropped 4 points of efficiency from 48% in the regular season to only 44% in the playoffs. And because of that, I am not going to try to pretend that this was some great performance by Joel Embiid, or even that he played average. He did, indeed, get somewhat shut down by Al Horford. Al Horford played phenomenal defense on him. The Celtics team as a whole played phenomenal defense on him. It's true. It's completely true. However, to act like this was some kind of massive choke in Embiid's first ever playoff run, I think is overblowing a little bit, especially when you consider that number one, Brett Brown was completely and utterly outcoached by Brad Stevens, who had a very good game plan to keep Joel Embiid out of the post, with Al Horford seeing help whenever he was getting beaten by Embiid, and number two, that most of that help came off of Ben Simmons' man, who was completely shut down in this playoffs. A dude who only shoots at the rim averaged 48% shooting from the field, including a one-point game in this series. Ben Simmons, this is going to be a trend here, as you will see, Ben Simmons was a big part of the problem. His man was able to double Joel Embiid, even when he did manage to beat Al Horford. So while his efficiency is still an issue, and I would call this a not great series from Embiid, acting like it is some kind of massive choke in his second ever playoff series is taking it a little bit too far. Next, we have the 2019 playoffs first round against the Brooklyn Nets, a series where Joel Embiid absolutely annihilated Jared Allen, who was already at the time known as a good rim protector, good defensive center. In only 24 minutes a game, 24 minutes a game, Joel Embiid averaged 25 points, 14 rebounds, 4 assists, and 3 blocks on 51% from the field. This man straight up dominated Jared Allen and the Brooklyn Nets in this first round series. There's not really anything else to say. He literally averaged more points than minutes while shooting 51% from the field. What more could you possibly want? And then we get to the 2019 second round where, straight up, Joel Embiid played like crap. <laughs> like, this was an awful, awful series for Joel Embiid, despite being probably still, no, I would say easily still, the best playoff series I have ever seen from an NBA fan perspective, Joel Embiid played like absolute doo-doo. He was clamped up by the Toronto Raptors' amazing post defense. He only averaged 18 points, 9 rebounds, and 3 assists on an abysmal, putrid, disgusting 37% from the field, 35% from three. The man was a complete brick. And while this series was nothing short of total humiliation for Joel Embiid, he was locked the frick up. Whether he was injured or not, it doesn't really matter. He played the whole series and he played badly. I would like to point out two small things here, just real quick in this series. 
First of all, Joel Embiid's help. Aside from the fact that his coach was Brett Brown, who we all know is an absolutely awful coach, and Nick Nurse, who is an amazing coach, completely outcoached him every step of the way, Joel Embiid's on-the-court help was not good. Jimmy Butler had a pretty good series despite being very inefficient himself. JJ Redick shot very well from three, but he doesn't do anything but shoot threes and is a terrible defender. And Tobias Harris, who is supposed to be the fourth star on this team, only shot 38% from the field, 28% from three. This dude was supposed to be the guy who made the Sixers an unbeatable super team in the East, and he played like crap. Ben Simmons, meanwhile, completely got smoked by Kawhi in this series despite supposedly being a good defensive player and only averaged 12 points and 5 assists. He was completely neutralized. I told you earlier, there's going to be a trend here. Ben Simmons does not play well in the playoffs. So while Joel Embiid did not play well, most of his teammates weren't playing very well either. And the other little point I would like to point out is that the Toronto Raptors were a team uniquely suited to completely shut down post players, and I mean players who mainly score in the post, because if you look at the very next series, Giannis Antetokounmpo also got clamped by Toronto, and their incredibly smart and lengthy defense. Marc Gasol, Kawhi Leonard, Pascal Siakam, and Serge Ibaka played amazing defense on Joel Embiid with a whole lot of great help, and they did the exact same thing in the next round against Giannis. All people talked about next year was how Giannis got clamped by the Toronto Raptors, how he underperformed, but I would just like to say maybe it was not only did Giannis and Embiid both underperform, especially Embiid, they underperformed, no doubt, but it's not like they underperformed against a team who wasn't a very, very good defensive team. I'm just saying. So while this series was a terrible blemish on Embiid's playoff career, he played awful there was a little bit more to it than just a star choking. There was a star choking while he had no help, and he was playing against an amazing defense suited to shut him down. That's all I gotta say about that, okay? Terrible playoff performance, but a little bit less bad when you consider the context. Now we get to the 2022 playoffs, and this is where Joel Embiid does nothing but play pretty darn well in the playoffs, starting with the first round against the Boston Celtics. And this series drives me absolutely insane. Not only for the fact that we lost to the Celtics despite Embiid playing amazing, but the fact that Joel Embiid seems to get most of the blame for this series. Not Ben Simmons, who didn't play. Not every single other player on the team besides Shake Milton, who played like ass. Not Brett Brown, who was literally coached circles around by Brad Stevens. No. Joel Embiid, for some reason, gets the blame in a series where he averaged 30 points, 12 rebounds, 2 steals, and a block on 46% shooting. And for my money, anyone who, like, criticizes Joel Embiid in this series clearly never watched the series. Look at his freaking teammates. Josh Richardson, 36% from the field. Tobias Harris, 38% from the field, 13% from three. Shake Milton actually played pretty well. Alec Burks, 33% from the field, 19% from three. Al Horford did not make a single three-pointer in that series. Raul Neto, 33% from the field. Matisse Thybul, 25% from three, 43% from the field. Mike Scott and Furkan Korkmaz, again, two dudes who were literally just three-point shooters, did not make a single three-pointer in the entire series. And Ben Simmons wasn't playing. Not that I think he really would have helped with how awful he's been in the playoffs, but I'm just saying. So Brad Stevens, all he had to do was say, hey, you the center, stand in front of Joel Embiid, and the split second he touches the ball, swarm him. If you watch this series, you know Embiid did everything he possibly could to will his team to the wins. He played amazing on offense, he played good defense, there was nothing more the man could have done. 46% from the field, people would be like, oh, he only shot 46% from the field. Yeah, because he was double teamed on every freaking possession. And if you want to say, well, he only averaged one, six, one assist a game, why wasn't he passing more? Uh, he passed plenty. His teammates were just a bunch of freaking bricks. Again, Tobias Harris, the number two option on this team, 13% from three, guys. Ugh, I, I don't know how people possibly blame Joel Embiid 
for this loss, but it is beyond idiotic. You don't even have to have seen the series, because for my money, this was Joel Embiid's best individual playoff series. Like, he played amazing basketball. If you were watching, he was going through double teams, he was hitting crazy mid-range shots, he was incredible on both ends of the floor. But, like, you don't even have to have seen the series, you can just look at the stats. This man was the only player on his team, again, besides Shake Milton, who was playing remotely good basketball in this series. What the heck was he supposed to do? He played great. Moving on to the 2021 playoffs last season, all right? In the first round against the Washington Wizards, Joel Embiid once again had a series where he averaged more points than minutes. He only played 24 minutes a game in this series while averaging 24 points. What, what more do you want me to say? And you want to talk about efficiency? He shot 64% from the field, 46% from three, and 89% from the free throw line. If not for the fact that this was a first round series against a nobody team, this would be a historic performance by Joel Embiid. Enough said, he played great. So now, finally, we move on to the last playoff series which Embiid participated in, the 2021 second round against the Atlanta Hawks. And in this seven game series, Joel Embiid put up 30 points, 13 rebounds, four assists, a steal, and two blocks. And he did this on 47, 36, 82% shooting splits. Those are very good stats to go along with pretty good efficiency. And the efficiency, some people may say, well, it's a slight fall off in efficiency from his regular season. Yes, yes it is. But I would like you to consider two things. First of all, Joel Embiid was straight up dominating Clint Capella in the one-on-one -on -one scenarios in this situation. Okay, Clint Capella, who was low-key in the Defensive Player of the Year race last year, who carried the Hawks offense, who is known as a great rim protector, shot blocker, etc., Embiid was whooping his ass, so they had to double him constantly, which they easily did because Ben Simmons was a straight-up bum. Not to get into it too much, I've had to re-record this because last time I just ranted for like freaking four minutes about how much I hate Ben Simmons. I've mellowed out, okay, I took a few deep breaths. To put it nicely, Ben Simmons, who we thank God finally traded, averaged 10 points in this series, and in the fourth quarters, he had 8 points. Not eight points like on average, like eight points in all seven combined fourth quarters. That's what Ben Simmons was contributing. So obviously the Hawks ignored his bum ass, they doubled and beat on every possession, and he still gave you 30 points on 47% shooting. That's pretty freaking fantastic, but if you want to say, well, he still lost the series, yeah, his teammates weren't good. His coach, Doc Rivers, was not good. The only players playing well in this series were Joel Embiid, Seth Curry, who shot amazing, Matisse Thibel, and Shake Milton, who are both role players off the bench, Tobias Harris, who is supposed to be the second star on this team while Ben Simmons is crapping his pants in the corner, only shot 36% from three. Furkan Korkmaz, Danny Green, and George Hill, three guys who literally do nothing but shoot threes, all shot 30% or lower, with Danny Green shooting an abysmal 11%. Gee, I wonder why Lakers fans don't like him. So when people come and they say, well, Joel Embiid's a playoff underperformer because he lost the series, I would like to ask, what the hell did you expect this man to do? He's not prime Shaq. He's not prime Michael Jordan or LeBron James. He's just a very good superstar. He's not quite a GOAT tier level player here, all right? Let's lower our expectations a tiny bit, and when you see a dude who's getting double teamed on almost every possession still average 30 points a game on 46% shooting, I think that should be seen as a pretty damn good playoff performance. I don't know. I, I just feel like that's somebody playing very well. So whether the Sixers, you know, win or lose, whether Harden fits, you know, maybe they disappoint in the playoffs again. I, once again, this year, just like the next, the, the last two years, do not expect Joel Embiid to be the one at fault. Win or lose, this man has been playing great basketball over the last two seasons in the playoffs. I'm really hoping that Harden fits. I'm really hoping the role players play well. I'm really hoping Doc Rivers pulls his head out of his ass and learns how to make an inbounds play. But even if none of those things happen, I can almost guarantee that Joel Embiid will continue to play like a legitimate superstar in the postseason, just like he has the last two years. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk.